Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Present day military air power has grown to the point where state of the art fighters could scramble and launch an airstrike in minutes. But the Achilles heel of aviation has been the vulnerability of air bases to enemy attacks. The U.S. military has taken a daring approach to exploiting this vulnerability by operating its fighter jets from the middle of nowhere. Today's episode is all about the daring move of landing and launching fighters from highways. Airstrips located at fixed air bases are soft targets for adversaries. Once damaged, the runway repair process is extensively long and labor intensive. Delaying operations until the runway is fixed poses a tactical disadvantage amidst an intense assault. To mitigate these adverse circumstances, the U.S. military decided to train its airmen to disperse effectively in such dire situations to sustain operations. This falls under the efforts of Agile Combat Employment, which is an operational scheme of maneuvers that is executed during combat scenarios. Agile Combat Employment, so basically air power anywhere, anytime. Uh, it's basically a proof of concept that we're just taking a 5,000 foot highway uh, and taking down some power lines to be able to make it safe to land, but we can do this anywhere in the country. So. If we can do this, we can do it anywhere in the country or any highways. Uh, we just need some sort of landing service and not necessarily like a built up air base to actually be landing or operating out of. The primary objective of agile combat employment is to swiftly disperse assets, personnel, and aircraft from fixed base infrastructures to a network of dispersed points to mitigate potential adversary damage. This movement necessitates the operation of military aircraft from austere runways, such as freeways and highways. Making it the most feasible alternative when traditional runways are unavailable. While a traditional runway is made to ease the landing with landing aids and signage, bringing down a fighter along a highway is no easy task, even for the most skilled pilots. To maintain military preparedness, Pilots undergo recurrent training by operating from austere locations to leverage their capabilities. During the training exercises, aircraft are operated from the highways with minimal assistance from personnel and infrastructure. This is done to replicate a real adversary threat. The U.S. Air Force initiated a training exercise for the very first time to practice unimproved surface landings with the A-10 Thunderbolt II attack aircraft. The A-10 Thunderbolt, which is the close air support asset of the U.S. military, is the pinnacle for operating on austere landing sites.
The ability to deploy from austere sites close to a combat zone offers immediate support for the ground troops. Unlike traditional landings, landing an aircraft on a civilian highway is a task of its own. Combat controllers play a pivotal role in setting up and controlling the temporary landing zones. They are FAA certified air traffic controllers, specially trained to establish landing zones in austere locations. And they undertake command and control of the site. The ultimate goal of austere landings is to conduct integrated combat turnarounds, which is a process of rapid rearming and refueling of the aircraft. Operating in austere environments under the concept of dispersal is becoming widely popular as near-peer threats have started to loom around the corner. While the U.S. Air Force mastered its agile combat employment tactics with A-10 Thunderbolts, MC-130J, and MQ-9 Reapers, the Royal Norwegian Air Force landed state-of-the-art F-35A fighters on a highway in Finland during a road base exercise. The Royal, Swedish, and Norwegian Air Forces participated in Bana 23. The annual road base exercise hosted by the Finnish Air Force, aiming to gain a competitive edge on dispersed operations. They share the same intention with the U.S. Air Force, to increase survivability by swiftly mobilizing aircraft during an attack. With increasing traction towards empowering dispersed operations, fighters that could operate in harsh environments are gaining the upper hand. Saab Gripen is one of the fighters that is engineered to operate from dispersed air bases with finesse. It could operate from a road strip that is only 16 by 800 meters. giving it the opportunity to operate from damaged runways, taxiways, and highways. Out of the most featured fighters, Saab JAS-39 is an incredible fighter, although it is often overlooked. Saab AB, a Swedish aerospace and defense company, manufactures this multi-role supersonic fighter. It features a delta wing, two canard control surfaces, and a fly-by-wire flight control system. Gripen entered service in 1997 as replacements for its predecessors. Draken 2-1, target OK. Saab 35 Draken and Saab 37 Vegan. Saab and Embraer collaborated in manufacturing Saab's most advanced fighter, the Gripen E. All the E models are manufactured at a final assembly line located in Brazil, owned by Embraer. Manufacturers employed model-based engineering, 
an approach that completely relies on digital models throughout the life cycle of the aircraft. During the design phase, manufacturers have kept in mind that cutting-edge weapons alone do not win battles in modern warfare. Rather, it's the right data that holds the key. Saab has invented the human-machine collaboration, which gives a better picture of the battle space with curated data to make informed decisions. The aircraft receives data from its sensors and through a data link network, which carries data from other aircraft and ground stations. Amidst the Gripen's adaptability and dispersed airbase strategy, the Dassault Rafale joins the list. Bolstering combat resilience with its superior capabilities. Rafal is a twin-engine, multi-role fighter with super cruise capability. The aircraft was first introduced in 2004 and entered service with the French Navy. Rafal has a delta wing close coupled to active canards. The close coupling is claimed to offer improved maneuverability and aerodynamic efficiency. Dassault Aviation has gone the extra mile to incorporate cutting-edge technology into the Rafale. Nearly 70% of the wetted area of the fighter is made of composites, enriched with cyanate ester resin to improve the high temperature stability of composites. In addition, 50% of the fuselage is manufactured from carbon fiber, saving a substantial amount of weight. Although the fighter is not stealthy, designers have taken the necessary steps to minimize the radar cross-section and infrared signatures of the fighter. Ultimately, the pilot becomes the linchpin of every operation, no matter how advanced a fighter becomes. The success of a mission is greatly contingent upon the pilot's expertise, comprehension, and judgment. The role of flight simulators is indispensable in training pilots to operate advanced fighters like the Dassault Rafale. The Rafale is highly maneuverable thanks to its delta wing and active canard surfaces. Alongside the diverse capabilities of the Rafale, the ability of the fighter to perform in-flight refueling further amplifies its operational prowess. A fixed refueling probe fitted to the nose section of the aircraft can receive fuel from a tanker aircraft. A refueling tanker like the KC-135 could refuel the Rafale via a shuttlecock-shaped drogue attached to the flying boom of the tanker. With ever-evolving geopolitical tension, the ability of an air force to disperse its aircraft and soar from the middle of nowhere has become a defining skill. As this requires precision, seamless planning and adaptability, comprehensive training will be the key to achieving mission success.
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.